Thanks for listening to the Suzy Larson Life Podcast, available thanks to support from listeners like you. It's only just a matter of Welcome to Sissy Larson Live. Always so honored to get to spend this time with you. In fact, I look forward to bringing you conversations every single day that hopefully inspire you in your faith walk, that deepen your understanding of God's Word, and that heightens your awareness of His very real presence in your life. Well, if you listen often enough, you know one of our favorites. Every month, we have our friend Dr. Troy Spurl on the show to talk about health and the healing process. We'll take your questions right away. In fact, we've got some overachievers. We've got a handful of people who've already been ahead of the game, have already texted their questions in. That's impressive to me. So we always start the show with our own topic that we're going to explore, and I'll explain that in a minute. But it just helps to get the text line going because oftentimes folks are listening intently. And then at the bottom of the hour, they text, and we have such a flurry of texts, we can't get to all the topics. So sometimes your questions weave right into what we're talking about. What we're talking about today is the different diet types and who they're for. Mediterranean, paleo, keto. Are they good? Are they fat? ads. Who are they for? What are some of the health concerns? What are some of the benefits? That's what we'll talk about for the first part of the show. And you may have questions related to diets, but you can really issue any question. Here's my caveat. Dr. Troy is not here to diagnose you over the airwaves. That wouldn't be fair to you or to him. We bring him on every month. To ho- Our hope and our prayer is to show you a bigger picture on your health care, where every step you take towards health and healing matters. Instead of living to treat symptoms and getting a pill for every ill, to step back and go, why is this happening? Maybe if I change my diet, what if I change my perspective? What am I holding on to in my body, like trauma uh, or bitterness or grudge holding? Those kinds of things profoundly impact your health. So we're hoping and praying that we can give you just a a holy invitation to really invite, invite God into your health and healing journey and let him take an inventory and then give you just practical steps every single time he's on uh, to take towards health and healing. As I always say, every step towards health and healing matters. As I said, we'll be talking about these different diet types, Mediterranean, keto, paleo. And if you've got other questions uh, about diets, go on and bring them in. Here's the number, text 877-933-2484. Quick announcement before we hear from Dr. Troy. It is Faith Radio's 75th birthday. Not sure if you heard, but that is no small thing. I mean, there's lots of radio stations that didn't make it past the first few years. And the fact that we're not only going strong, but going stronger, that by God's grace, we're going all over the world. It's his glory to his glory. And it's also to your credit because we're listener supported. So we want to give you gifts for our birthday. How fun is that? We've got 75 fun birthday boxes. And if you want to register to win one, just some fun treats inside, go to myfaithradio.com. All right. Now let me tell you about my guest and we'll get him on the show. Dr. Troy Sproul is founder and CEO of Synapse Center for Health and Healing, located in Egan, Minnesota. He started Synapse over 26 years ago with a vision to bring an integrative approach to healthcare through functional medicine, making Synapse an internationally known center for true health. Dr. Troy, welcome back to the show. Thank you for having me. Looking forward to this conversation. And before we dig in, we, uh, as you know, always start by talking about our times with the Lord. What's he been impressing upon your heart these days? Well, I'm going to read from uh, 1 Corinthians and uh, 1031. Uh, Whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all through the glory of God. Hmm. And so um, with that, uh, I've I've quoted that many, many times before, but... uh, This time was a little different. So when I I looked at that, I look at glory of God and uh, I I started digging into, well, what does glory actually mean? What is, what is that part of that conversation? Because I always, we focus on the food, but the glory uh, of God uh, is very, um, it's profound when you kind of look into it. And in the Old Testament, the Hebrew word that's actually used means heaviness or weight. And, And they were very, very practical. So it's basically... It's like your your weight in gold. It's like your your worth and mm. your um, it, it's an expression of the importance, the greatness, the honor, the, the splendor, the power, the and weightiness so on. So it's, of it's it basically, all. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And yeah. so 
uh, it's really when I look at it, and then we're talking specifically about diet today, it's about you being the best version of you and how much that honors God. Mm. And so that's a part of a big part of that uh, that statement as far as the glory. Just just everything should glorify God. So it's really boils down to taking care of your temple uh, and then uh, being obedient so that you can just uh, um, just really honor uh, the Father by just being the best version of yourself. I love that. You know, I'm doing a lot of inter- interviews right now for my book, Waking Up to the Goodness of God, and there's one short reading in there one day. I don't remember what I called it, but it's something about loving your body. And, uh, you know, we're in a day where there's been such idolatry around our bodies that Christians tend to take it to the extreme, thinking the other extreme is to berate your body. But the opposite of idolatry isn't berating, it's actually blessing. And I, and I remember a day while I was writing this book, I was in my little exercise room, and I got a mirror on the wall, and I was just doing some strength work. And the Lord said so clearly, Susie, drop those weights, look in the mirror and say, I love my body. And I couldn't do it. And, and I, it's, it's just amazing how God invites us into the healing process. And as I sat with that and thought, why is that so hard? Then the honest truth came out. It was a true confession moment. My body has betrayed me. My body's too hypersensitive. People get frustrated because I need accommodations, which makes me frustrated with me. And it was like all that stuff, Troy, I've been stuffing in the basement. And when the Lord gave me that one invitation It was like I had to unpack some stuff, and I thought, you know what? This body is the temple of the living God, of the Holy Spirit. We carry this treasure in these earthen vessels so we know that the power is of God and not of us. And it was just one giant leap forward going, just because I feel like my body's betrayed me or let me down does not mean I have a right to berate my body. And again, the opposite of idolatry is not berating. It is blessing, blessing your body. And I just felt like maybe someone needed to hear that today because you might think it's noble and spiritual to berate your body, but you're fearfully and wonderfully made. And Troy, I'd love for you to speak to any of that if you have thoughts. Well, yeah, I'm going to share. There's a testimony on our website, but I'm going to share the, a brief version of that testimony because um, uh, it speaks to this uh, in, a, in a big, big way because uh, that self-condemnation can actually block a healing for you. So I had this patient who came in and she uh, had bleeding ulcerative colitis. So every time she would eat, she'd actually have blood in her stool. And uh, with that, she also had debilitating neck pain. She had to see her chiropractor three times a week to just get a a 5 out of 10 level discomfort, which was manageable for her. And so we started seeing her and she, within the first month, we started seeing some change with some of the physical markers. Within two months, we started seeing changes with the lab markers And a lot of things are being cleared up, but no change with symptoms. Three months into treatment, same thing. She was getting very frustrated. She was very type A on top of things. And um, by uh, somewhere around the fourth month, all of our markers were improved. And I said to her, uh, everything's improved that we can measure. We've got to look at your mindset. We've got to look at where where you're at um, as far as that part of the healing process. And she said, no, that's my strength, which it was, it was absolutely her strength. She was, she was a leader at her church, small group leader. She helped counsel women and she was very knowledgeable scripture, just did a great job with that. And so I kept uh, adjusting her because it would, was keeping her afloat. And I kept saying, there's gotta be something we're missing, uh, with the emotional component. And she kind of fought me on it three appointments in a row and then she was leaving the office and made a comment. And I said, well, that's the unique body God gave you. And she said, I hate the unique body God gave me. Mm. And that's when I said, what did you say? And she repeated wow. it. And I said, what would you tell someone who came to you in a small group and, and said that? And she kind of was taken aback and then went home and uh, called in the next day. And she said, I think you're right. I would tell them to repent. I said, okay, what does that mean? And she said, change one's mind direction, 180 degrees. I said, okay, what did you do? She said, I started thanking God for the body he gave me last night. And she said, something strange happened. I had no blood in my stool for the first time this morning when I ate. And then all of a sudden there was a week with no blood in her stool. And then there was a month, no blood in her stool and a week where she didn't need adjustments. She's now over three and a half years with no blood in her stool. And she has not needed an adjustment for the neck at, at all. Um, and that was the last part of her healing. It, it was that that self condemnation, where she would kind of pick herself apart, uh, and it was blocking her healing. Wow. And so that that is very very. I want a lot of people to hear that because a lot of times women will, in particular, will look in the mirror and they'll pick themselves apart, and that's not right. Guys will look in the mirror with his big beer gut and say, <laughs> "Not too shabby." 
<laughs> That's also not right. <laughs> 10. It's a 10. <laughs> it's a 10. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we could. So we need a low that. dose of both. Yes. Yeah, that is so good. Did someone need to hear that today? Will you text me and give me an amen? Because what I'm amazed about the healing process, I often say it's never a straight line. It's layered by layer by layer. When when God knows you're ready, He'll allow something to surface. And I feel I feel sure some of you are listening today, or you're going to catch the podcast later, and that's the next place for you to address with the Lord your thoughts and feelings about your body and your thoughts about God because of your body. If you can find some healing there, what if that's blocking a healing process for you? Um, Wow. Kind of amazing. Thank you for that, Doc. Okay. We're going to talk about three different kinds of diets and uh, kind of describe them, who they're for, maybe health concerns, some of the benefits. So the first one is paleo. On your market set, go. (laughs) <laughs> well, paleo, we, we, we use primarily with our autoimmune patients. And so these are uh, patients where their immune system is, uh, we used to say confused, but it's not really confused. It's over overreacting. So it is similar to an anti-inflammatory diet, but there's going to be very specific foods that trigger uh, problems. And so if you try a, a paleo diet and you do well with it, then there's a high, high likelihood you have a tendency towards autoimmune, which means generally speaking with autoimmune, there's some level of stress, infection, hormone imbalance, vitamin D deficiency uh, that has caused uh, some level of uh, problem and is a little bit out of balance. We also see that with a lot of people who have sleep disorders. And so it is very, it's a very good diet for, um, because of just the foundational stuff, it, it's very minimalistic. There's a lot of stuff um, where with uh, they're just like older, older foods. So generally speaking, we have a saying: if God made it, it's good. If man changed it, beware. And the paleo diet really takes out a lot of the man-made food. Hmm. So let me list um, what to eat, what to avoid, and some of the short-term benefits. I just pulled this off of, uh, I think this is off of a Mayo site, but it says uh, fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, eggs, lean meats, especially grass-fed animals, wild game, fish, especially those rich in omega-3, fatty acids such as salmon, mackerel, albacore tuna, oils from fruits and nuts such as olive oil or walnut oil. What to avoid? Grains such as wheats, oats, barley, legumes such as beans, lentils, peanuts, dairy products such as milk and cheese, refined and added sugar, added salt, starchy vegetables such as corn, jicama, peas, white potatoes, highly processed foods such as chips or cookies. So that kind of stuff you get rid of. In general, short-term, small studies suggest a paleo diet might help manage Weight loss, blood pressure, cholesterol, triglycerides. This is just a very basic article, so I'd love for you to speak to it. And then the concerns it said was that it may lack, because it lacks whole grains and legumes, uh, and those are good sources of fiber and vitamins, proteins, other nutrients. And then low-fat dairy products are also good sources of protein, calcium that you're not getting. So the risk of eating paleo is that you might not get all the recommended nutrients. Anything you'd want to add or qualify there? Yeah, it's also important to remember that a lot of times when you're eating, like just taking out the processed foods, when you're eating uh, inflammatory foods like sugar and processed foods, you're blocking a lot of the nutrients from other diets anyway. So it's very important to know that uh, there is no perfect diet, uh, but people will feel better um, on specific diets. And this one in particular, because they've altered a lot of our grains, you can get the different uh, uh, fiber from different sources uh, uh, nowadays. And the vegetables in particular uh, are very, very good with that. The, some of the B vitamins um, you can get from uh, other sources and supplements. So I really like the the paleo diet um, and a modified paleo diet, which means that 80% of the time, once you're in a good place, you can do like a modified paleo where 80% of the time you're, you're eating that way, basically. So you say paleo is mainly for autoimmune and inflammatory issues, or is it really a overall decent diet for just about anybody? Well, it's a decent diet for just about anybody. And you just, uh, like everything, you just have to pay attention to how you do a certain food. So you, you may need to tweak some things. So, cause I have some patients that, um, if they've had their appendix out, they can't handle the nuts and seeds of a paleo diet. Or if they have an issue with, um, we have a lot of people who have egg sensitivities and egg allergies, 
and therefore they can't do the eggs or their gallbladder bile duct system is not quite working right so they can't handle the the eggs so just know your body and and pay attention to how it reacts to it but in general is a really good uh clean diet to start with especially in the united mm. states canada and mexico and i love what you said too once your body levels out and acclimates you can every once in a while have a treat around from the families of dairy glu- uh, grains legumes that kind of thing so or a you know a chickpea well yeah i would imagine like um hummus would that be okay in that diet with your vegetables well, no, hummus is a slightly different. Hummus is, is better with the Mediterranean diet, but hummus okay. can be, it's very high carb and okay. some people can't handle that. So sometimes it's good and, and it's a 50-50 one. So Got it. Uh, just so know okay. how you how, how you feel with it. That's why you have to also you know, pay attention. But hummus is one of those 50-50 Good to know. All right. This is why it's so important to just be looking into this because there are times you might be just ravenous eating this stuff going, it's healthy. It's not, you know, it's not a chocolate bar. It's not, you know, a box of cereal and it probably is better than that. But um, yeah, it's good to know what these foods are made of. We're going to pause here. When we come back, we're going to look at the keto diet and the Mediterranean diet. Then we will dig into some questions. And I will say, I saw one that says, Dr. Susie, Dr. Troy, that one's getting a priority. I'm just saying, just kidding but not really. We'll be back. This is Susie Larson, host of Susie Larson Live. You know, life can get so busy, and maybe for you, you're starting to feel the toll on your soul. Well, God can make a way in your life through every season, and he's always up to something new. How about you set apart some time to be set apart and discover what God wants you to know, what God wants you to do. Join us at the upcoming Set Apart Conference. It's for women on March 8th and 9th. You'll enjoy vibrant worship, workshops, fellowship, great speakers. Give your spirit the spa treatment. Register today at setapartconference.com. Thanks so much for tuning in to Susie Larson Live. Our good friend, Dr. Troy Spurl, joins us every month. He's CEO and founder of Synapse Center for Health and Healing, located in Egan, Minnesota. Joins us on the show every month to talk about health and the healing process. And every month, he and I pick a topic that we want to kick off the conversation about, and then we start taking questions. So I'm so glad to see a lot of texts have come in. Keep them coming. If you've got a question, text it in. We'll do our best to get to it. And whenever there's an overflow and enough to record another whole show, Doc and I will get together and record an extra bonus bonus show and answer all those questions. So don't be afraid to send your questions in. We'll get to as many as we can. Text your question to 877-933-2484. So first, you know, our kickoff conversation is about three basic diets, who they're for, maybe some potential health concerns, and and why they're good in certain cases. So paleo, Dr. Troy says it's really good for just about anybody. It's just a good, healthy diet. And the second one I want to talk about is keto. And that's probably not good for everybody. So explain the keto diet who it's for and who it's not for. Yeah, keto, I'm not really a fan of the keto lifestyle as far as just a, a straight up keto for long term for most people. Um, keto is basically when you've completely switched from using carbs for an energy source to more fat instead. And so fat actually burns, you get more energy from fat it's like a nine to four ratio. So it actually is almost double that of sugar as far as the energy that it gives you. So it is really a, a clean fuel source. And so back in the day, we used to be in ketosis a little bit more. So it can be good. I do like it temporarily for a lot of people. Now, I will say for my um, Alzheimer's and memory program patients, keto is by far the best diet and it works really well. And the majority of people who can do that diet uh, do very, very well with memory. So that that I do like. And then if if you're having no issues with weight loss or, or memory, then you can do what's called a keto flex. But uh, some people, the, the biggest problem I have with keto is that some people just uh, can't maintain it long term. And so it, it's uh, then they go back to some old habits as far as dietary stuff. So it's the really the big problem is just how hard it is as far as compliance, but, um, and I have so some, I would imagine, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, I have some patients who are doing keto, 
um, that uh, are in the Alzheimer memory program that are doing just amazing with it. And it is remarkable how good for the brain it is. Wow. I was going to say, when you the, the reason it's a big deal, I would imagine, of not staying uh, true to the actual diet is you're eating high doses of fat and protein. So if you're adding carbs to that, you're really causing a significant issue in your body, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So it's not, yeah. there's not a lot of wiggle room there because you're either using the fat for energy or you're not. And the second you actually uh, start to bring in some sugar and carbs, the body will use that because it's a faster burning fuel. So it, it'll it get used up first and, and faster and kind of pull you out of that ketosis. So then you're not burning fat and and you're not cleaning and replacing the the, the bad fat, if you will. And, and remember, most of our nerves in our brain is fat and the, the membranes are fat. So it's it's a tough diet. Hmm. Wow. Tina writes in, she said she was at a healing conference years ago and a person involved praying for people said over her, not knowing what was going on with her, said, when you stop being so hard on yourself, you'll be healed. She said the person had no idea that the autoimmune disease that she has is scleroderma and it means hard, hard skin, hard organs. Isn't it cool how God wants us healed with our identity as well as our physical body? I'm undone by how much he loves me. Wow. Wow. It's powerful. Yeah. All right. Uh, Let's see here. Um, There's a Gonzalez diet for cancer autoimmune. The late Dr. Gonzalez developed and he had amazing documented results. The blood type diet A's have sensitive immune systems, low stomach acid. Uh, True for me, you don't have blood analysis done before you eat and after to see the results. May the Lord bless you. Any thoughts on that one? Yeah, the it's a uh, it also uses like enzymes and supplements and stuff as far as the Gonzalez diet, but uh, the the protocols based off of the blood type uh, you have to again look at just what uh, affects you and what doesn't uh, affect you. But no, it's a good it's a good healthy diet, and mm. uh, they when they use the enzymes, it helps clean up um, a lot of the different. Uh, um, just what we're, some of the garbage stuff that's in the cells too. So we, we get exposed yeah. to a lot of that these days. Mary Jane says, I'm on keto, tried slowly to get off it and glucose, insulin and fatty liver all got bad, got back on it. Numbers got better except cholesterol, cholesterol's high. So interesting. All right. Well, let me, uh, let me comment on that because the cholesterol will go high, but it doesn't equate to bad heart disease. So just know that. So that is, a, that's a thing where the cholesterol will go higher, but doesn't necessarily, uh, relate to any type of cardiovascular risk. So that's a whole different conversation. Okay. Which diet is good for osteoporosis? A listener asks. Any diet that improves your your alkalinity. So funny enough, the ketogenic diet, you eat a whole bunch of acidic food, but it ends up causing an alkalizing effect in the body. So that one is number one. Number two would be paleo, then Mediterranean. Um, Hmm as far as the the, the three diets. Uh, and the, let me speak to it this way. When you have low stomach acid, which was just uh, talked about in the Gonzalez diet, but when you have low stomach acid, then you can't break down proteins as efficiently. And if you consume sugar, then the sugar will feed the bad bacteria and the yeast and fungus that start to grow because the pH of your intestines changes. So uh, low stomach acid equals high body acid. And so, you, and you don't digest the proteins as well. So it's important to um, just know that the, the sugar will feed the bad stuff that then increases the body acids. And then the body acid going up is one of the mechanisms that causes uh, leaching of calcium from your bones. Because mm-hmm. whenever you have high acid, what do you take? Like a Tums to neutralize the acid. Well, your body does the same thing. Your bones will release calcium to neutralize the increased acidity of the body. Wow. Wow. And taking Tums over time isn't really the best way to handle the acid, right? You want to find out why your acid levels off. Yeah, yeah. So, and uh, I used uh, Tums as an example to how what people do to neutralize the acid reflux. But, but most people with acid reflux have low stomach acid, not high stomach acid. Hmm. They just have they have a weak sphincter valve uh, that uh, is allowing the acid to come up into their esophagus. So, um, but if you want to neutralize acid calcium neutralizes it. So that's why the calcium is being pulled from the bones when the body acid is too high. Wow. Okay. Question for the doctors. Thank you, David. That just, I don't know, makes me happy because I don't deserve it, but it's funny. All right. Have you heard of the book Eat Right for Your Type? It's based on foods that are more beneficial or uh, or to avoid based on your blood type. 
I, I have. I really put that into play two, for two years when the book probably came out, I don't know, maybe 15 years ago. And um, I didn't see enough uh, there to have it be something across the board. Now, the diets that did help were the O diet and the the AB, which was basically the one that was like a almost like a vegetarian or a high vegetable diet and the one that was a high protein diet. So those are the ones that tend to help people anyway. So there, there's something to it, but it, but it wasn't enough for me to, uh, to, to use as one of our onboarding diets. Got it. Okay. So, all right, we've got a number of, I'm going to take one more question and then I'm going to go to the Mediterranean diet. Hey docs, wondering how much protein a 63 year old woman needs per day. Red meat gets such a bad rap these days. Is grass fed, grass finished a safe bet? Also is grass fed meat hard on our kidneys or liver? Great question. Well, the protein um, depends on the ability to actually absorb the protein. So again, when you're 68, uh, if you're making enough stomach acid, that's the whole key. Um, that is uh, that, has, that that really defines th things more. If if you eat protein, and it feels like a weight on your stomach. It means you're not digesting it. Uh, so as far as the amount of protein per day, uh, we actually like to use a, a formula. Uh, as far as per kilogram, um, let me just see here. Uh, it is going to be point, uh, point 0.8 to 1.2 grams per kilogram of weight. That's kind of the range we like to use for at hmm. that age. Hmm. So 0. 0.8 okay. to 1.2, uh, you just have to figure out what your kilograms, what your weight is in kilograms. All right. Which for all of our Canadians, they'll know right away. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. We talked uh, keto. We've talked paleo. Let's talk Mediterranean. We just got a few minutes before this break. But as I understand it, Mediterranean is lots of vegetables, fruits, beans, lentils, nuts, even whole grains and uh, brown rice and lots of virgin olive oil, moderate amount of fish. Anything else you would add to that? No, that's it. And it, when we say olive oil, we mean olive oil, a lot of olive oil. And so even if you're not doing a Mediterranean diet, I think it's just so good to get a, a, a really clean olive oil and just uh, do a tablespoon every single day. I, I was mm. working with some uh, fairly elite uh, athletes. Um, they're, uh, I can't mention them by name, but they are... Uh, international athletes right now. And uh, that was one of the main things we did is we added olive oil and it completely changed a lot of the lab work in a beneficial way. And so uh, it was even just straight uh, up, because like you don't a cook it, just like straight up. It? Yeah. Yep, yeah, exactly. And wow. it works really well. Or just taking pasta uh, for those that can eat pasta and, and, and drizzling olive oil on it uh, on, on top of it instead of butter and uh, mm. things like that. It just goes a long way to helping, uh, your overall health and in the Mediterranean, they will, they'll bathe in olive oil. They'll, they'll, they have so much olive oil. They'll, they'll use it uh, on their, in their hair. And it's just so good for your skin and your hair and hmm. all your cells. So I'm a huge, huge fan of olive oil. Uh, you can cook at it with low temperature. Yeah. Is and that then, good for, uh, if for an acidy gut, would olive oil be helpful that way? Yeah, it can be actually. If you do too much of it for some people with gallbladder issues, it can be an issue in the beginning, but eventually it'll it'll clean up. And here's the problem though. Uh the wheat that we have here in the United States and the pasta is not the same as the wheat in the Mediterranean. I have a lot of patients that uh, go over to Europe and they they can follow a Mediterranean diet and feel good and then they come back to the United States and follow it and they feel horrible. That's a problem with our food here. Everyone needs to realize our food is very different here in the United States because we have changed it. And again, if God made it, it's good. If man changed it, beware. Wheat is one of the major things we've changed. So a lot of people can't handle the pasta here. I do have a lot of people that order pasta from Europe and they're fine. Wow, isn't that amazing? I use bonza pasta. It's a chickpea pasta um, when I, whenever I have it. But so that's interesting. So people who are on the Mediterranean, you don't necessarily have to have all those grains, do you? If they find themselves gaining weight, if they did vegetables, fruit, beans, lentils, nuts, plenty of olive oil, um, moderate amount of fish. Is it okay to do other proteins like chicken and steak once in a while? Oh, yeah. I'm saying none of that. Okay. Yeah. No, no. Uh, it's mostly fish, poultry, and eggs are their big ones on the Mediterranean. Okay. Uh, limit red meat, but they still allow it. 
Mm. Okay, and, so, and you, someone picked up on your uh, clean olive oil comment. So how do they know if they're getting a good olive oil? Well, if it's organic, uh, that is a big uh, a deal. And then there are different olive oils. When you start getting into olive oils, olive oils are almost like fine wines. Like uh, when people study fine wines, they, they you can get all kinds of expensive bottles of wine. Olive oil is the same way. There, there are olive oil um, from over in... Uh, uh, Italy and Israel that uh, literally are six hundred dollars a bottle for a little oh, six wow. ounce bottle, oh, and wow. some of the the active antioxidant ingredients that they have in them are just very very uh, very very uh, potent. And mm -hmm. so, so funny but, enough, but, here at Costco has a clean version. Their organic olive oil is one of the cleaner ones. Wow, Do you on, hear that, friends? Yeah, here in the cities, yeah. Someone asked if uh, would olive oil be good for psoriasis on the scalp? Yes. And you've talked Absolutely. about psoriasis before. That's an inflammatory response in the body, isn't it? Yeah, and the skin, remember, is a reflection of what's happening on the inside of the body. That's an immune reaction to something, and your immune system fights infection or manages inflammation. So if it doesn't go away by improving the olive oil stuff, you know there's a hidden infection somewhere. Okay. And David says, my system generally does not do well with fats and oils. I tend to get acid stomach from it. Any thoughts? Yeah, so there is some cleansing that needs to be done there. We do see that with SIBO and people uh, have, there's a detox reaction that has to occur. So there's, uh, generally we see that with people who need uh, fasting or just have to kind of slowly work through and improving the bile duct system. So I'll give you an example. If there's any amount of caffeine, coffee, or alcohol bits being consumed with that, that has to be pulled out. That has to be Even avoided. decaf, right? It, Decaf's more acidic than regular coffee, isn't it? Yeah, and that well, that yeah. it's more the the liver, it's more the caffeine. So it is decaf. Mm -hmm. Some people can get away with, but but yeah, you're right. The the acidity is there, and then sometimes people have a stomach infection, an H. pylori infection, um, that's kind of at the root of that. And then sometimes people have a functional hiatal hernia, meaning that their stomach is caught up in their diaphragm and it has to be pulled down. So uh, you you ease into it, but there'll be something else that's in play because the olive oil itself, the clean version of olive oil always eventually soothes that system. Um, but you have to, you have to fix the uh, what's causing the stomach stuff too. And I, I'll, I'll throw in there sleep disorders can also contribute to the, the stomach and the, the reflux part of it. Mm. So maybe a good start for anybody then is to drizzle olive oil on your salad. Just be mindful every day to get, get it somewhere on your food, right? Absolutely. And just start real, real small and and ease into it to get your system working. And I'll, I'll say one other thing, make sure your bowels are moving um, and you're having daily movements because that'll help you with any type of fat and, and gallbladder and bile duct uh, issues or acid reflux in the stomach. Wow, very good. One last quick question about oils. Ask Dr. Troy about fish oil. You've talked in the past about not all omega-3s are the same. If you buy them just at your basic you know store, um, you're going to get a bottom feeder probably version and there'll be uh, lots of stuff in there you don't want. So maybe say a quick word about fish oil. Yeah, fish oil can be actually pretty toxic because you can get a lot of mercury built up in there. And that's the last thing you want to do is add good omega-3 fatty acids contaminated by mercury. So make sure the company that you get it from actually says distilled, double distilled or triple distilled and uh, guaranteed to be mercury free or tested to see if it has mercury. That'll give you some insight into whether or not it's a clean version. There's very, very few of them on the market. And so avoid, like the plague, the big, big fish oil um, capsules that uh, are just are cheap and, um, you know, come from bomb fears, like you said. So just, just, have, just look for the cleanliness. Hmm. And did you mention a good pasta? Um... Uh, you know, I mentioned bonza that I use, that's chickpea pasta, but did you mention a good pasta? I know you talked about clean olive oil, but someone asked about that. No, didn't really mention anything. And so if yeah. you don't have problems with wheat, uh, just doing an organic whole wheat um, is okay. Uh, if you can get uh, organic whole wheat or whole grain pasta from uh, overseas, that's even better. And they do, ha they do exist. Uh, they do have different... Um, markets and stuff from European markets that will bring it in. 
So okay. they, they do exist, but uh, I don't have a, a particular brand and okay. uh, I just want it to be as clean as possible. And, and if you can find anything from Europe, then that's actually going to be even better. Okay. We have to take a break, but I want to just a, a yes, no answer on this one. Wondering if the olive oil at Costco needs to say 100% extra virgin olive oil. That's a question from a listener. Uh, yeah, that is the, that is the one. 100% yep. extra virgin olive oil. There you go. Everything's and organic. Racing to Costco. The shelves are going to be <laughs> empty, but that's okay. Talking to Dr. Troy today, we're going to take a quick break. All right, we've gotten through our, our kickoff conversation, which as you see, it's ignited a lot of other questions that have come in around oils and diets. And uh, we're going to now tackle your questions and get through as many as we can. Talking to Dr. Troy Spurl. I'm Susie Larson. We'll be back in a minute. Thanks so much for tuning in today. I'm Susie Larson. This is Susie Larson Live. We've got our good friend, Dr. Troy Spurl, on the show. He joins us every month to talk about health and the healing process. We've been talking about diets the first half of the show, Mediterranean, paleo, keto, the pluses and the, and the negatives, you know, of what, what the benefits and who they're for and who they're not for and kind of landed on the Mediterranean and uh, paleo are really good diets for most anyone, um, especially the paleo. Keto is extremely helpful with Alzheimer's patients and other people with inflammatory issues. So do your homework, but good, good information. Now we're going to tackle as many questions as we can. This is going to be like a lightning round. Troy, we're going to see how many we can get through. So on your mark, get set. Here we go. First question. Uh, is there a way to overcome an overactive histamine response? Can you avoid high histamine foods for a period of time to heal your body of it? Uh, so the the answer is yes. And there are certain things that can help reduce the histamine. So histamines, uh, so exercise uh, can do it. Acupuncture needles actually will pull out histamines. But uh, uh, regulating your with niacin, um, so, which is a B3, can also help with uh uh, histamines. And so taking antihistamines is, is one thing. Improving your kidney health can also uh, help with uh, the getting rid of the histamines. And ultimately, you want to make sure that if there's any underlying infection or immune triggering uh, scenario, that can also help. So a low histamine diet can definitely be beneficial. It does take a while. So uh, just be uh, diligent and just know that uh, that there is a, a component of of just ups and downs for a long time. And I also need you to know histamine is actually needed in the body to feel good. It's needed to make stomach acid. So sometimes people have too much histamine in their peripheral tissue, but not enough in their stomach area. So what mm. sets that up? If you're in fight or flight mm. and not in rest and digest, it goes to your peripheral tissue. So sometimes it's not even a histamine primary problem, it's a fact that you're in too high of a stress state or you're not sleeping. Just by correcting that disorder and improving the, the digestive system, your sleep system, all of a sudden the histamine stuff will start to uh, go away. Wow. Okay. This dear one says she's a stay-at-home mom of four young children, two, four, six, eight. Since her first pregnancy, she suffered extreme dizziness, spots, seeing spots, sometimes portion of her vision being distorted for an hour or two, headaches, extreme brain fog, where as she used to have a quick, sharp brain, and ex uh, let's see here, now she has extreme fatigue. She drinks tons of water, eats relatively well. She's chalked her symptoms up to adrenal fatigue and inconsistent sleep, but wonder if there are any other things that could be causing it or uh, anything she could do to help prevent the symptoms. I actually had a lot of that in that same stage of life. But anyway, what do you say, doc? Yeah, it's very, very common. Um, and so, yeah, adrenal fatigue is a good thing to be looking at. And uh, it's not the same as the medical adrenal fatigue. It's basically uh, a, a mechanism of not regulating your minerals properly. It can also be a pelvic floor strain where the physical aspect is causing and setting up a perpetual sleep disorder. It can be intestinal inflammatory problems where you have like an ileocecal valve, but the valve between the small and large intestine is spasmed. And that could be setting off uh, a chain reaction where your lymph system is, is uh, swelling. Uh, so there's, there are a lot of things that can trigger that um, blood sugar dysregulation. Uh, also, if your vitamin D was low during the time of going through delivery, some autoimmune scenarios can be set off, but this doesn't sound autoimmune. It sounds like a, pretty traditional um, reaction where the adrenal glands are just not uh, bouncing back like they should. And so 
getting a, a, a good uh, improvement in the in the sleep and actually getting rest and restoration is going to be helpful. Sugar itself and inflammatory foods will make it worse, which is hard because when you're sleep deprived, what do you crave? Usually yes, sugar. Carbs. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and we did. We've done whole shows, multiple shows on adrenal fatigue in years past. And one thing that I remember was so important in coming back from adrenal fatigue is laughter. So the rest, the sleep, good sleep is really, really important. No sugar, low sugar, uh, but laughter was really healing for the adrenal glands. And so, friend, it sounds like you need some spa time, some time where you, you know, we're going to pray that God gives you some kind of rest in the night and even in the morning. Um, that God or a nap in the afternoon. And that someone will come into your life to make you laugh, a good friend or a good YouTube video or something. Anyway, God bless you. Okay. Uh, Fran asks this, how do you know if you have low stomach acid? Ooh, that's a good question. So uh, again, one of the best ways to, to know if you have low stomach acid is to have a steak at 4 or 5 p.m. and then see if it kind of sits on your stomach if you're not able to digest it. Uh, from lab work, if your total protein is low or low normal or lab low, then that can be uh, also an indicator. Or your albumin uh, or globulin, those are proteins that are in your blood. If those are low, we see that with uh, low stomach acid. The other tests that are done uh, medically uh, are very invasive, so you don't necessarily need to to, to do that. But the, those are generally the the ways to tell constipation is a, a sign, potential sign of low stomach acid, but it's, it's a sign of many other things too. So it doesn't mm. correlate a hundred percent, but that's what I would okay. start with is the food sitting on the stomach like a brick. And, and if you happen to have any lab work, um, those other markers will are good indicators. Okay. This has to be a quick answer because we've got to go to break. Should you put olive oil directly on your skin? Yes. Okay, good. I love it. We're all doing that too. Everybody go to Costco, get your olive oil, slather it all over your head and uh, drink it. But no, do it in, in moderation and be wives about it. But super interesting takeaway. Okay, when we come back, we're going to keep on with these questions. Thanks so much for your text. We're going to get to as many as we can. Dr. Troy Sproul's my guest, and we'll be back in a minute. This is Susie Larson, host of Susie Larson Live. You know, for 75 years, God has been changing lives through Faith Radio. To celebrate, you could win one of the 75 Faith Radio birthday boxes filled with Brant Hansen's new book, Life is Hard, God is Good, Let's Dance, and a new Faith Radio t-shirt and some other fun things to help you grow and commemorate this important birthday. You are an important part of the family. And on this special birthday, you get the presents. You can enter to win yours at MyFaithRadio.com. That's MyFaithRadio.com. Thanks so much for tuning in to Susie Larson Live. Dr. Troy Spurl is my guest today. He joins me every month to talk about health and the healing process. We've had such an encouraging and engaging conversation, as we do every month. It's always a different show, always so interesting where God leads us. Spent the first half of the show talking about diets, uh, paleo, Mediterranean, and keto, and now we're just answering all kinds of questions. We've been talking about olive oil and how important that is in your diet. Lucille just tuned in and said, what about coconut oil? Do you want to say a word about that? Yeah, I love coconut oil for um, a couple things. I just had this conversation with my, one of my uh, patients yesterday that, that was from Hawaii. And uh, they, uh, I was telling them that coconut oil is good in replacement of uh, sunscreen and things like that. I'll, I'll still put sunscreen on my nose and ears, but very, very rarely anywhere else. So I will consume coconut oil. I love doing oil pulling for the teeth with coconut oil. It whitens the teeth. It cleans up a lot of the, the bacteria. And then one of uh, my wife and I uh, use a, uh, a facial scrub that has organic coconut oil and coffee in the scrub. Yeah. And the caffeine tightens the skin. The oil actually um, is good for the skin. And so it pulls a lot of the moisture there. So it'll help uh, prevent sunburns in the future and also okay. makes the skin really healthy. You got to tell us what that is. Well, uh, we're actually going to be bringing it into the the clinic, but uh, we ran into a, a couple from Iowa 
uh, while traveling and they have this company. And so we, uh, we tried it. And so we've been playing around with okay. it and, and it's, it's just organic, uh, uh, coffee and organic uh, coconut oil and they made a tube they put it in an easy to to use tube you can actually do it yourself too with just organic coconut oil and take a scoop of coffee and you just scrub it on i don't your, know on I your feel face an incident. just once a week <laughs> I, feel <an> incident. <laughs> I feel an incident coming on every time yes. someone says it's easy their famous last words with me i don't know why <laughs> but something yes. goes awry so i'm just gonna let them put it in the tube for me and i'll try it when right. it's ready I don't know. Kev, I can see him rubbing his temples right now going, I don't encourage her. So anyway, yes. <laughs> uh, but I'll, I'll catch up with you later and we'll give it a try and see. Janet's so funny because she sees you and she listens in and she goes, I'd be remiss, Dr. Susie and Dr. Troy, if I didn't ask about the M&M peanuts and Cheeto diet. She asks every time. (laughs) The answer is still no. She's such a rebel. Still no. (laughs) She is. (laughs) Okay. Kathy says, Susie, Dr. Troy, I want to know what Dr. Uh, Troy's opinion is on castor oil, using it on joints, even lumps on the side of the breast. Yeah, we use it. Uh, Castor oil packs are very, very helpful. And uh, just be careful because they will induce some mega release and detoxification. So um, we've been doing a lot of uh, uh, addiction treatment with uh, uh, heroin and meth and some other um, addiction scenarios. And just the stuff that that uh, comes out when we start using these castor oil packs, and when you do it on the abdomen, it can induce pretty significant bowel movements as well for the for those that are constipated. So okay. it also will cause uh, the bile duct and gallbladder system to dump for some people. For some people, it doesn't do anything. But uh, castor oil packs are very, very effective. Wow, very interesting. Okay, a number of people are asking about the oil pull. I can't even believe I forgot about this because I remember one time I had the beginning of a little toothache and I asked you about it. And we, I did um, coconut oil and I did a couple of essential oils like um, like the, the immune boost or something. So I put the warm oil with a couple of drops of essential oil, put, held that in my mouth for 15 minutes. I did that a few times in one day and, and then... The pain was gone. But that also, as you said, cleans out your mouth. So talk about coconut oil pulling so people understand what to do and how to do it. It should be organic, clean coconut oil, first of all. Yep. And it'll be hard. It's like a tablespoon. And you put it in your mouth and you just swish it around. And uh, and that's it. So it's like, uh, uh, like you gotta melt don't it gargle it or anything. Yeah. yeah. It will melt in your mouth um, just from the, the heat. And you just swish it around, swish it around. And uh, it actually, your teeth feel cleaner. Your your mouth um, is is nice. It's like getting just a, a clean, uh, a, a cleaning, if you will. But also, uh, remember, don't spit it down the sink. It'll clog the drain. So you spin it, spit it into like the garbage or or outside. Just uh, make sure it doesn't go into the sink where it can clog things. So, uh, and what, yeah, what does it do? It's again, pulling simple. toxins out of your mouth, right? I mean. Right? Well, it, it's it's fat, so it, it's actually pulling toxins out of the mouth, but it's also uh, a fuel source for the good bacteria uh, as well. So it has a, 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 an effect on the the probiotics, the the good bacteria. It has an effect on just pulling some of the contaminants, and um, it also uh, helps the 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 teeth itself. It's like a, it coats them, and it actually helps the strengthening of the teeth. It's anti-inflammatory for the gums. Wow. Very good. Okay, we've got a question here that we don't have time to answer, but she says, I've learned so much from both of you over the years. You should co-author a book. Trust me, I've thought of that. Curious about Dr. Spurl's detox protocol for blood spike protein after COVID or vaccine. Also, would you speak to ocular rosacea accompanying condition? That's that's too much because we only have uh, a minute left. But any quick word you can give about detoxing from the, the spike protein? Yeah. So the first thing I'll say is go to our website, officialsynapse.com, because I've done a whole podcast, a whole hour on that. And um, the, there's, a, there's a lot of things you can do. Nanokinase and lumbrokinase are what we're finding work the best. And just making sure you have to be consistent. And so there's a lot that goes to it, but uh, that's, that's the general um, process. And I'm working with a lot of doctors across the country. And if you specifically... Uh, one of the PAs that we hired from uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma, that that there's a podcast where she talks about that. She's been treating this very successfully around the country. And so she's the one that we're working with that's kind of pioneering our our program with that. Wow. Well, um, I don't we don't have time to uh, tackle another question, but you got about thirty seconds. Any other thoughts you want to close the show with today? 
just the when it comes to diet, when it comes to just being healthy, it's important. There's so much information out there. It's important to, to really just have awareness of what works for you. Uh, the majority of our programs and, the, and what we do with patients right now is to take them through a process of what works for you, what doesn't work for you. And that is good understanding. There's so much information out there. The real problem now is of the, the hundred things that it says I could do when I just Googled, what are the three or four that actually matter most to me? So just hmm. have awareness so you can make good decisions for your body. Wow, Doc, thank you for this. This has been so super helpful. You should see all the texts that came in. Maybe, no, you didn't because you're in your office today. <laughs> thank you for the time yes. today. We so appreciate it. Absolutely. It's always my pleasure. Mm. And we love you, friend. Thank you for tuning in. Every step towards health and healing matters. So have hope. God will lead you on the path of life. Just ask him, what's the next thing you want me to do? And he'll show you. Love you so much. And we'll meet you back here next time. Thanks for listening to Suzy Larson Live. Podcasts like mine are available because of your support. If it's important to you to hear things that encourage your faith, click the link in the show notes and give now.